I'm going to explain quadratic equations, but before doing that, let me uh, let me try to explain to you expansion of polynomials. So if you have x plus 2 times x minus 5, you are told to FOIL it, uh, meaning that you multiply pairwise. Right? So you have x squared, x times x, which is x squared, x times negative 5, which is negative 5x, 2 times x, which is 2x, 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10. Combine these two because these are like terms. These are not like terms, so you can't combine. So you get x squared minus 3x minus 10. If you look at closely what happened to the final outcome, you can kind of see where you got these numbers from. First, the easy one is negative 10. How do you get negative 10 from here? 2 times negative 5 gives you negative 10, right? How about negative 3? Where did this number come from? You had a 2 here, you get, had the negative 5, they were combined, right? So negative 3 is what? It's 2 plus negative 5, right? Yeah. What is 2 plus negative 5? It's negative 3, right? So this is the sum. In other words, what I'm trying to explain is that if you have x plus a, x plus b, if you multiply them out, you get x squared, and then something times x, and then something. What goes in here? I guess this is easy. What goes in here? A and b are some numbers. So what goes in here? A times B. Yeah. A times B. These two numbers multiplied will go in here. What goes in here? A plus B. So that's the way you expand polynomials. However, when we try to solve equations, quadratic equations, we have to do the opposite. We have to be able to go from here to there. So uh, in other words, let's say you're given an equation like this. Okay. Now, the way you solve this is by writing this as something times something equal to 0. And since you have x squared, it must have x here and x there. And there are some unknown numbers a and b. But we know that the sum of a plus b is what? is this number, negative 6, right? What's a times b? It's this number, negative 8. That's what we just observed, right? Good. So now let's think about two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 6. Okay. Now, to get a negative number, that means one is positive and the other is negative. It can't be both negative or negative, both positive, then the resulting product will be positive, right? So one's positive, one's negative. So you think about all the possible, oh, I just realized, yeah, it works. Oh, yeah, so it doesn't work. This should be positive. Okay. Sorry, it, the, the x squared minus 6x minus a, I realize there is no pair of numbers that does that. So uh, I just quickly uh, showed that not all quadratic equations can be solved this way. Okay? But for some numbers, some quadratic equations, you're able to find a product and a sum that satisfies this equation. Right. OK, so you have a times b as positive. That means they're both positive or both negative. Okay? Which case is it? Both, both negative. Both ne why? Because their sum is negative, right? Okay. So we know that they they should be both negative. Eight. What two numbers multiply to eight? Negative four. Negative two. Negative four. Negative two and negative four. They add up to negative six, right? 
So now you see that it should be negative 4 here and negative 2 there. Okay, and this, this product gives you 8, the sum gives you negative 6. Perfect, it works. Okay. Now once you have this format, now you can solve this uh, by saying that at least one of them should be 0. So either x minus 4 is equal to 0, or x minus 2 is equal to 0. And this would be true if x is 4. This would be true if x is 2. Uh, this relies on the fact that if two numbers, so, so here's a fact, if two numbers a and b multiply to 0, at least one of a or b should be 0. Okay. It's kind of obvious, right? If you multiply two non-zero numbers, you never get 0. Only when you multiply by 0, you get 0. So when we see that two things multiply to 0, that means either this is 0 or that's 0. When is this 0? You see that uh, if, you, if you add 4 both sides, you get x is equal to 4. When is this is 0? Uh, that's when x is 2. So you have two solutions. Uh, when you solve a quadrant equation, uh, you may have up to two solutions.